Hello and welcome to the Energy Detox, a petroleum-based blend of leadership conversations guaranteed to boost your professional and personal output by flushing away the hidden and often toxic barriers to peak performance. I'm your host, Joe Sinnott, a chemical engineer, executive coach, and 16-year energy industry veteran helping you tap into the same resources fueling today's most successful and sustainable leaders. And today we're going to deviate a little bit from our normal pattern of taking an energy industry headline and weaving it into some leadership themes and questions that could help you as you lead your own teams and your organization and your family. And we're going to deviate today because it's a day that should call for us to deviate a little bit from our normal routine as we honor veterans here in the United States. And on this Veterans Day, we're going to take a headline that's focused on an organization here in Pittsburgh that is helping to provide service dogs for veterans. That organization, Life Changing Service Dogs for Vets, is one that is helping to fund the purchase of and the training of these dogs that could run up to $25,000 and like a year and a half or so of training to provide and match up with veterans who need the support of a service dog, who need the support of something to help them overcome some of the issues that have stemmed from their time in service. And of course, as we know, unfortunately, so many veterans are suffering through problems long after their, their time of service has come to an end. And so clearly having having an organization that provides some measure of service to these veterans who gave so much for us is something that is worthy of one, sharing with you today on this podcast, of course, and two, focusing on as a way to encourage you to help those who are suffering, whether they're veterans or not, and to help honestly prevent you from going down an unsustainable path that could lead to extra stress, extra problems, much in the same way that our veterans are suffering through stress and problems that quite frankly, are unimaginable to to me and so many others who haven't served as they have. So again, turning to this article that you can find here in the show notes, this organization, again, Pittsburgh-based, is doing a tremendous job of matching up veterans to these dogs. And as you know, if you've had a dog or you've seen the impact that a dog can have on an individual's life, the results are tremendous. It, It is an undeniably positive impact on these veterans' lives when they can be paired up with a dog who can help them in so many different ways, whether it's alerting people to potential problems for veterans who might be suffering physical ailments or seizures, for dogs who can help to provide emotional support, for those who are suffering through PTSD and other, again, you know, mental health issues that are stemming from service. And again, I don't need to rehash all of these details. You can read about them in the article. You can find any number of other organizations that are helping veterans. But it does lead to several questions that could help you help others as they navigate problems, whether or not they're veterans. And that first question that we're going to go through today to help, again, you help others, especially those who are serving some bigger purpose as our veterans have done, is how often do you focus on gratitude before growth? And what really led to this question is the fact that in this day and age, as fast paced as it is, We're so inclined to keep moving forward, right? We're going to move past whatever obstacles. We're just going to keep moving on. And clearly, that approach doesn't work when it comes to our veterans. You can't just move on. You can't just leave people who have given so much, who have sacrificed so much for our country, and then let them fall by the wayside and, you know, move on to the next problem, the next issue facing us. And again, beyond the world of of military affairs, it happens in people's daily lives, whether it's their personal lives or their professional lives, where they just want to move on. They just want to grow. They want to, they want to keep building momentum. But while there's nothing wrong with continuing to move forward and move upwards, if you will, the question is, are you at least starting with gratitude? Are you starting by being thankful for what you have and what you've accomplished? And, you know, maybe taking a moment to reflect on that gratitude piece before focusing on the growth piece. And again, it, it can be cliched, right? In, in the world of leadership development, there's no shortage of, of books and positive affirmisms that talk about, you know, leading with gratitude and, you know, giving thanks and, you know, these, you know, 
gratitude meditations that you could do first thing in the morning. Those are all positive things. But the question is, are you doing it? Are you taking the time to be thankful for what you have already accomplished and what your teams have already accomplished before giving the appearance that you're simply ready to move on and move forward and, and you know, not necessarily build upon what you already have in place? And so if you're not doing that already, ask yourself how you can introduce a little bit. Again, it doesn't have to be anything crazy other than the next time you're, you're you know, starting to move on to a new task, ask yourself if you've given appropriate thanks for what's already been accomplished. And again, coming back to our veterans today, are you doing what you can do to give gratitude for the men and women who have served our country? And if not, what can you do? What can you do today? Which brings us to the next question with, with a little bit of urgency, which is what can you do today to better protect yourself, your team, and your family from the stresses of the world? Again, these stresses pale in comparison to many of the stresses that will continue, unfortunately, impacting so many of our veterans. But stress abounds. And we shouldn't necessarily just run away from stress, especially if it stresses that quite frankly, are going to continue existing in our lives. We can't pretend like they don't exist. So what can you do today to mitigate some of those stresses? What can you do to protect yourself against some of those stresses so that they don't lead you down a path that is unsustainable and unhealthy? And again, I do not want to minimize the stresses that are on our veterans. In fact, I want to call attention to it. In fact, this organization, this life-changing service dogs for vets, at the outset, they wanted to match 22 veterans with 22 dogs. And the unfortunate reason that they chose the number 22 is because the statistics say that roughly 22 veterans commit suicide each and every day. That is not sustainable. That is not healthy. And obviously, that is not a problem that is easily solved by any individual. Which brings us back to the question, though. What can you do today to help protect those around you, whether or not they're veterans, regardless of what their jobs have been, their role, what little things can you do today, by the end of the day, to help them navigate those stresses? Is it a simple conversation? Is it a phone call? Is it a text message? Is it maybe making a donation, reaching out to an organization, asking how you could help do X, Y, Z? Whatever the stakeholder in mind is and whatever the task is, there is something you can do today. I don't know what it is, but ask yourself, at least in honor of veterans today who are suffering through, again, unimaginable stresses, what can you do today? It might not be supplying a $25,000 service dog for a veteran, but again, there's something out there that you can do. Ask yourself what that is, and I encourage you to do it. And the final question today is how can you help service-oriented leaders unlock and sustain purposeful, productive, and rewarding careers? And again, coming back to the theme here, we're talking about veterans, people who have served our country. And clearly, after their time is done in the military, we want to continue allowing them to move forward and live a full, rewarding, purposeful life. And while these service dogs can help at least meet some of the, the basic needs from a, from a health standpoint and from a well-being standpoint, the question is, well, what can we do to help get them back into society and ensure that they can keep moving forward and, and contributing in many ways that, quite frankly, many civilians you know, don't have the skills to do, which is why, again, coming back to the energy industry, the energy industry employs a higher percentage of its workforce than other industries in terms of you know, employing veterans. You know, long story short, I think the normal, the veteran population in the workforce is something on the order of 6%. The energy industry is more like 10%. And why? Well, because you have service-oriented individuals, service-oriented leaders who have, again, uh, dealt with tremendous stresses and challenges and overcome them. You have people who have dealt with teamwork in environments that, you know, the, the, the most polished and motivating executive coach and speaker in the world couldn't dream couldn't dream of addressing. So that's some of the very you know, many reasons that our veterans make such great contributors to the energy industry. So again, the question comes back to you, though. How can you help those service-oriented leaders get into a position where not only are they contributing, but they're doing it in a sustainable manner that doesn't over-rely upon their get-it-done attitude and all of the things that made them the 
proud soldiers that they are. So all that being said, I appreciate your time as always. Uh, I certainly welcome your, your comments and your feedback and criticisms about today's message, but hopefully if nothing else, it certainly shed a light on an organization that you might not be familiar with. And even if you're not in the Pittsburgh area, I encourage you to read the article because it speaks to some of the challenges and some of the opportunities regarding veterans and some of the needs that they have, not just financial, but obviously from a support standpoint. Again, we're dealing with people who served our country. And the big question is, how can we best now serve them? And so whether it's through opportunities like this, whether it's through some of the, the smaller things that you can do to support veterans, the question is, how are you going to help? How can you help? How will you help? And with all that being said, again, I, I thank you for your time. I thank you for your energy, your attention, your uh, maybe not devotion to the energy detox, but if you happen to be a devoted listener or watcher as well, then that's great. But either way, thanks to you. And most importantly, thanks to our veterans for serving our country and for all that they've done to ensure our freedom and our protection. And so with that, have an excellent rest of the day, an excellent rest of the week. And thank you again.